for today's movie review, I'll be reviewing Undercover Brother, a 2002 American-Canadian film that's essentially based upon a internet animated series of the same name. And the movie essentially is a spoof of black exploitation movies of the 1970s, and also pokes fun at other films like the James Bond franchise. And the movie is also directed by Malcolm D. Lee, as in the cousin of Spike Lee. Yes, that's Spike Lee. And even though this movie came out in 2002, I actually even never even heard of the movie till recently because normally when I like to work on my movie reviews, typically I like to have a podcast playing in the background to provide like background noise. And on one podcast that I listened to, this group of people were talking about Undercover Brother, and I never even heard of the movie before. I'm like, okay, what is this? So I decided to look it up. I'm like, okay, this looks kind of like a fun movie. And literally, maybe like a day or two later, I happened to be seen this movie playing on TV. I said to watch it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to review this movie. So the big question is, is Undercover Brother a good spoof of black exploitation movies? As for the plot of the movie, it's about this freelance agent named Undercover Brother who joins this secret organization called Brotherhood, where he and this group of secret agents go on his mission to save a black candidate's presidential campaign along with all of the African-American people and culture from this madman named The Man, who tries to sabotage a black man's candidate campaign through the usage of a mind-controlling drug inserted into Kentucky Fried Chicken. In terms of what I liked with the movie, the overall plot of the movie is pretty simple to follow. And if I had to describe the sense of humor this movie has, it's very much in the same vein as something like the Austin Powers movies, because it's poking fun at stuff like black exploitation movies in the James Bond franchise. Also, the movie has a really good solid cast of actors playing really good characters, especially the guy playing the lead character, Undercover Brother, along with Dave Chappelle's character, Conspiracy Brother. Those two are the main highlights of the movie. And the movie humor is a bit of a mixed bag in some instances because for every good joke, there is a bad joke. But the best thing about this movie is this movie is so fast paced, kind of in the same sense of something like Hot Fuzz, where the jokes come so fast that you might miss it the first time. And also, as I was saying earlier, with the bad jokes, it's quickly forgotten about because the next joke afterwards might be really fucking good. I also like how this movie's sense of humor primarily tackles stereotypes of black people, white people, and women, but does it in a funny manner. Not in so much, oh, we're just gonna insult one particular race, we're just gonna offend everybody. And that's essentially the type of humor this movie has, and it works. And the movie, even though it's pretty ridiculous, the movie is not meant to be taken seriously. It's meant to be over the top, which is something I liked about. And as far as a spoof movie goes, it's definitely better than some of the more recent spoof movies that come out in recent years. And as far as the soundtrack goes, it's a really catchy soundtrack. And it works well with the movie. Although, there are some songs that they play throughout the movie that are very dated of the time. But everything else works fine for the film. And the movie is really fast-paced and entertaining. In terms of what I dislike about this movie, even though there's a lot of songs in this movie that are pretty catchy, there are also some songs in here that are very of the time. As in, like, oh, you listen to this, some of the songs in this movie, it's like, oh, this is so 2002. And some of the jokes, again, like the soundtrack, is both a hit in the midst because there are some jokes that work well while other jokes that don't work so well. Also, out of all the characters in the movie, I feel that Neil Patrick Harris's character in this movie, I could have done without. I mean, I get that he's supposed to be the token white guy of the group, but as far as the movie is concerned, you could have taken him out of the story and the story would have been fine just as it is. And also, I feel like if they did make this character relevant, I don't think you needed to have Neil Patrick Harris playing this character because he really doesn't do anything funny. And and every time I see him, I go, oh, look, it's Neil Patrick Harris playing a character. Like, I don't see the character, I just see the actor. Like, I feel like you could have gone any other Caucasian actor who played this character, and I think that it would have been fine. And I kind of question the writing to this movie, because even though it's PG-13, there are several points in time where some of the characters say fuck a lot, which kind of caught me off guard at first. But then there are also other points in time, especially one revolved around Neil Patrick Harris's character, where he essentially does a bunch of moral combat fatalities on a bunch of goons, and again, it just kind of caught me off guard. I mean, granted, in the concept of the movie, it's meant to be 
the comically over the top, but I sat there and went, how is this a PG-13 rated movie? I'm like, I'm surprised that they get an R rated or something. Because he does pull a spy in a heart and Chris's dude's head in like a matter of seconds. I'm like, it just hook me out of the movie for a second. Because with the Mortal Kombat movie, they couldn't do any of the fatalities or gore. And that's why that movie has a PG-13 rate. Yet, yeah, here's this boof that basically does the exact same, that actually incorporates a lot of gore and does those fatalities, yet it keeps its rating. Like, I'm just kind of confused by this. And there are some parts of the movie that do drag a bit from time to time. And I get the purpose as to why they drag certain scenes out, but I feel like the movie should have been more fast-paced. So, for my final verdict of Undercover Brother, the movie movie is alright. So on one hand, there is a lot of fun to be had here. It's just some other parts of the movie don't hold up that well, or there's good subs for jokes, but maybe not the best execution. And as far as the spoof movie goes, it's not as good as something like Spaceballs, but it's definitely better than date movies. So this kind of falls in the middle in the same vein as something like Last Action Hero or Mystery Men. But at the end of the day, if you want to watch a good modern day black exploitation movie, watch Black Dynamite. It's the much better movie to watch here. So, long story short, it's an alright movie, but better than most spoofs. And before I give my final rating, what did everyone else have to say about Undercover Brother? So it looks like the movie got generally average to positive reviews. And so for my final rating of Undercover Brother, I give it a 3 out of 5. So, what's your favorite exploitation movie? And see you later.